Have you ever wished that Tony Hawk games had demons? Well, maybe more demons than that. Maybe lots of demons, maybe hordes of demons that you have to kill, and you're on a motorcycle the whole time while doing tricks. Let's take a look at Motor Doom. It's a very interesting concept, isn't it? A trick-based action sport style game where you're getting high scores and also killing demons on a motorcycle. Let's take a look at it. The trick system feels good. You've got flips, which is going to be BMX type stuff like bar spins, tail whips, and there are grabs too, of course, and you can hold L2 to do flips, but with how hectic this game gets, I didn't do that much. Rounding things out are grinds, manuals, and wall rides, really everything you need for a pro skater style game, but there's one thing that's significantly different, the gunplay. R1 becomes a fire button and you have to shoot demons as they pop up. This adds a whole new dimension to the game so that you're constantly shooting enemies while trying to complete objectives. And it has a few gameplay side effects. For one, the enemies chase you slowly, so the longer you stay in an area, the more enemies there are. Trying to collect a particular letter for a while, and you will be trying for a while, will attract more and more demons. Eventually, you have to leave the area or risk dying, which restarts your run. The other side effect is that it's hard to bail. You can land sideways or even land in the middle of a trick animation, and it's fine. This is a good thing when you're being chased or you're fighting a boss. Yes, there are bosses, more on that later. But it sucks when trying to get a high combo. With so much going on, I'm watching my multiplier go up, and suddenly it's back at 1. After a long time playing, I realized it was because an animation wasn't quite done yet. There are no reverts, but you can land directly in a manual convert. It feels weird after years of Tony Hawk, but it works, and if you land backward, you spin back around automatically. That's pretty nice. The game doesn't have stats, but it has something a little bit different. Demonic contracts. Well, there are two kinds. One you get as a collectible, like a secret tape, but for the most part, the demonic contracts are stat modifiers, like better manual or grind balance, higher jumps, that kind of thing. But there are also weapons upgrades, like more damage, faster shooting, and the like. When you first start playing the game, you get bombarded with these pop-ups constantly. It's nice to be able to pick through them because some of them are bad, like getting less ammo. But in the end, I switched the setting to automatically accept these because it was driving me crazy how often they come up. This is the part of the game that really sets it apart. It's a roguelike, meaning you'll lose all of this progress when you die. But as you play, you might get a ghost arm with a sword, or flames that shoot out during grinds, maybe lightning strike sometimes when you shoot. Every now and then you get a really strong combo. For example, in this winter level I basically became invincible. I wanted to collect gears, which is the currency you can use to buy upgrades to your bike. They drop randomly when you kill demons. At this point I had a chainsaw in front and in back of my bike, and a contract that refills my health when I get a kill. So I was able to ride into waves of enemies and come out the other side, turn around and do it again. Of course I still had to deal with the boss. Let's look at the rest of the challenges though. As you might expect, there are three high score levels. These are pretty attainable. Then there's a high combo, but instead of being a score, it's a high multiplier amount. This is an interesting take on this, and it's probably done this way so you don't have to try to do math while also maintaining a balance meter and surviving the gunfight. So it's simplified, but not necessarily in a bad way. The combo can be hard though, especially because your combo resets all the time if you land too early. I spent an eternity getting the snow level 1. Speaking of combos, there are combo letters to collect, which works like you would expect. There are also letters to motor, which are like the skate letters. Collecting letters is way harder than you might think, even from the first level. You'll find that it's almost impossible to line yourself up for stuff a lot of the time. You hold A down to accelerate and you let go to jump, so going slow and precise is very awkward. And it's kind of a bad idea too, because it gives the demons more time to catch up to you. Everything has to be done at full speed. And this introduces some issues. In this level, I have to grind corpses, and I have to hit kickers like these to do it. There's nothing to grind that will perfectly put you in line for it, so you have to just whip yourself at it and hope. And hope again, and again, and again. Oh, and by the way, don't die or accidentally kill the boss and get kicked out of the level. Or, speaking of speed problems, there was a nearly impossible combo that I had to do. The C and the O were no problem, but that dumps you into a straight line at a rail that you have to grind sideways for the M. You can't ride over the edge of the bank without getting some air time, so be ready to do another manual or to jump all the way from there, but good luck. This drops you into line with a launch ramp that throws you up to the B or way over it, in my case. 
As it turns out, my bike upgrades made my jump height so high that I would miss gaps that it's designed for me to do. I guess that one was on me. Levels also have something unique, like grinding those corpses or a certain rail, wheelie over pentagrams, smash crates, you get the idea. These are my favorites, like they always are in games like this. And lastly, there are bosses. For the first time in a game like this, since Evolution Skateboarding where you have to fight a semi-truck, these appear once your timer runs out, and they are of course big scary demons. They have attacks, but the most annoying one is this pentagram. If you let it grow to full size, you bail. So you have to keep moving and not stay on the ground too long. This makes the combo-based challenges really tough, so I always try to do those first. What the game expects you to do is shoot the boss directly. You can hold L1 to slow down time and it lets you aim and shoot. What I did was do combos and just shoot whenever my ammo was refilled. You do more damage while doing tricks, and taking the time to aim just sets you up to bail, which might cause you to get swarmed by demons, or to ride into some lava which will kill you and end your run, but if you ride back and forth and just shoot whenever you can, you'll eventually chip away at their health and win. The bosses are not particularly difficult or intimidating, and sometimes are hard to find. But you've killed the boss, what do you get? You get an actual permanent upgrade once per level, and you collect gears, which you can use to buy bike upgrades. Higher jumps, better manual balance, better grind balance, stuff like that, but you can only pick one at a time. You can pick from a chainsaw, machine gun, or shotgun in the front, or something like bigger fuel tanks in the back, or higher health. And there are skins too, but I was only able to afford one in my playthrough. These upgrades are a welcome addition to the game because they really do make it feel different. And I get why they don't let you stack all of them. It's more about the trade-off of specializing one way or the other, but the random aspect to the demonic contract upgrades undermines that a bit when it's on auto. It would have been cool to be able to pick a strategy for that, like collect all firepower upgrades and ignore trick upgrades just to make it a bit more seamless. In the end, I didn't beat the game. But I got close. I'm on the last level in the menu, and I only have to wall ride five skulls and find the last demonic contract. But this level really got to me. Having so much trouble with the precision of collecting everything drove me a bit insane, and it also took me quite a few tries to kill this boss. Like I said, the bosses don't require special strategies or anything, but just in riding back and forth in this level and trying to do my thing, I would end up in the lava and die fairly often and after roughly 32,000 attempts at collecting the combo letters, I was done. So what's the verdict with this game? The genre mashup I find very interesting. I would have never come up with the idea of Pro Skater with Guns as much as I would have loved to take out Eric Sparrow if I had the chance, but I really like the design aesthetic, the uh, PS1 style graphics, kind of like Street uh, Uni X, which you can see a review for right here. Um, I thought that was really good, but for me, I was playing it a, a lot like Matt Hoffman. I was going for the high scores and the combos and all that, and I just had to keep reminding myself to shoot demons. Uh, you might have the opposite, uh, where you really get into the, the shooting and the combat stuff and you're forgetting to do tricks. Hard to say, you know. Um, there is a lot of fun to be had with the game. It has very positive overall uh, Steam reviews, and it's $14, so pretty cheap. Could be worth a chance if you're not sure about it, but those are my thoughts on it. Thanks for hanging out.